it's Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy and it's week four of the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along. And this week my rulers are just a little sad because they are not getting used at all. This week is all about free motion quilting. I'm gonna show you how to quilt the leafy meander as well as how to make it more intentional with the placement to create interest to those big areas of negative space. So let's get going. So far in this challenge, we've worked with a few fun quilting patterns. We've learned the meander, which has helped us learn how to move our quilt in all different directions. We've tackled continuous curve, which helped us work on those nice arc shapes. We're gonna take everything we learned in those earlier two episodes and put it together in this beautiful pointy design. It's almost as though I thought through all of this when picking the designs. So let's pick our square and get started. And to quilt the leafy meander, I'm just gonna start by quilting a line that arcs out to a point and then comes right back. So almost like a pointed oval. And one thing I want you to see is it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical on each side. I just want to curve out, kind of like the continuous curve that we did, come to a point and then go right back. Now the spacing between my lines right here is gonna determine how dense the quilting design is. So if I wanna quilt it to death, I can make this a little narrower, or if I just wanna get this finally freaking finished, I'm gonna make it bigger. But once I have my shape, I'm gonna echo around the outside of that shape. So echoing, I'm just gonna swing out and quilt the same shape, just a specific distance away, coming to the point and onto the other side. And then I have my first echo. I can echo it as many times as I'd like. So I might go ahead and echo it again, swinging out quilting my point and coming back. But when I come back to echo, I might not be able to make it all the way back to the starting point. I'm not gonna force myself to do that. As soon as I start to run into something, for instance, the edge of the block right here, I'm gonna stop. If I try to echo it back all the way to that first point, it's gonna get really thread built up right there and I don't want that. So go ahead and echo it as many times as you like, but when you're ready to add your next one, I'm gonna quilt that same shape coming out to a point and back but I'm gonna to try to make it go in a slightly different direction. So this one's kind of pointing out to the side, traveling along the edge a little bit and echoing. And here's another example of when I can't get back to the starting point, but I'm just gonna get close and echo back. So now I have two of my little leaves. As you're quilting, if you're not sure where to go, use your finger to approximate the next couple of steps. It's a lot easier to change your mind than it is to rip out quilting. So I'm gonna echo it again and then quilt my next little leaf out here. Echo. Don't worry if that first leaf isn't symmetrical, that's not the important part. I'm focusing on keeping that spacing as consistent as possible. Coming in and then back out. Then when I'm ready, I'm gonna make my leaf go in a different direction, maybe down here. echoing. Now I think people will notice a hole in the quilting before they notice an error. So if I have a gap, I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Even if that means I have to work my way over here, travel over, fill it in, and come back. Of course, if that doesn't bother you, just leave it. It's not the end of the world. So I'm going to come out here. I'm going to kind of scooch my way through. You don't have to make that sound, although it does kind of, does kind of help. And then echo and then come back. Pretty much the answer to this whole design is echo. All right, new leaf. Echo, echo, echo. You might echo more, especially if you're scared about adding your next leaf. So as I'm quilting, I'm keeping everything nice and close. I'm kind of pretending like it's a blob. I'm filling in any spaces, making sure I don't have any gaps before I move on. Now up to this point, we've echoed around the leaf that we've just quilted, but you don't have to do that. You can echo around previously quilted leaves. For instance, if I'm right here, but I wanna end up back on the edge that I started, I'm gonna echo around those leaves to get to that point, like this. Now what makes it work is that the spacing is consistent. So whatever spacing I'm using between these lines, I'm gonna do the same here. And once I'm where I wanna go, then I can add my next leaf. So as you're quilting, there's really only two decisions you have to make. Do you leaf or do you echo? And really, none of them are wrong. And I really, really, really want to make them go in all different directions. I mean, at least for right now. Of course, when we do the next variation, I'm going to tell you to forget that. It's not very nice of me, is it? 
Now as you're quilting, you have most control when your hands are on either side of the needle. Can you see my bad habit? My hands are not by the needle. I have to remember to reposition them often. All right, another leaf. Now those points can be a little tricky. When you're quilting those points, I want you to think kind of like a ping pong ball. I want you to bounce in and right back out. Don't hesitate in those points too much because it'll take a few extra stitches and you might get a little knot or a little bit of thread build up right there. Not that it's the end of the world. We could just call it a fun variation of the leafy meander, but the main idea, bounce in and out, echo, echo, echo. Echoing to fill in any little gaps, right? Any of those little weird gaps, we're gonna echo. Okay, so once you get comfortable with this design, we're gonna talk about ways to help you maneuver your way around an area. There's three easy tricks to the leafy meander that'll help you do it. The first one is, if you need to change directions really fast, I'm gonna go to my point, and instead of going all the way back the next direction, I can kind of branch right off of that leaf right here. What that's gonna do is help me turn the corner really fast, or turn around really fast. Let's me make almost like a U-turn. Another thing that you can do is, let's say I need to go this way pretty quick. I can quilt my leaf out to that direction and then run it right into something else. So what I'm doing is kind of pretending like it's going behind that leaf. As you can see here, but it's helping me turn the direction. So that, you might already be doing that, and that's fantastic. That's just gonna help me turn that corner really fast. Third thing that you can do is, let's say you're quilting along and you don't know where to add your next one. You can just run your echo line into your previously quilted echo. And what that's gonna do is just give you a new place to branch off. So you don't have to echo all the way back to the beginning. You don't have to stop at the point. Actually, you can stop anywhere you want in that echo and then just start a new leaf. It's kinda like turning over a new leaf. <laughs> oh, that's a bad joke. Well, they're all jokes, they're just not all funny. And so as you can see here, I just stopped, ran into the other leaf, and then branched off of it. I have a weird little gap over here, so I'm gonna echo in there and fill it. Now the reason I think it's so good to practice within a square is it helps you do a lot of different things. It helps you learn how to maneuver your way around an area, especially when it's defined. It helps you know when to start and when to stop. It gives you a, a clear sense of completion. It also really helps you see that if you make a mistake or quilt something that isn't perfect, once you keep filling in around it, it's gonna look great. So when you're practicing your squares, commit to filling in the whole area without stopping, without judging, and without cussing. Well, no, that's okay, you can cuss, that's completely fine. When we're practicing, we're not practicing to be perfect, we're practicing to learn. And so having a good method of practice will help you be more efficient with that. Now what happens if you make a mistake? Let's say you make an oops. It's gonna happen, right? It's not whether or not you're gonna make mistakes, it's how do you handle the mistakes that you make when it comes to free motion quilting. So here I have my oops. If you're quilting and you make a mistake, the worst thing that you could do, in my opinion, is to stop. Keep going. Knowing how to handle your mistakes or to continue on and hide them will help you be more successful when you start quilting. So I'm gonna keep going, keep adding my same design, keep filling it around it. Something I say all the time, the best way to handle a mistake is to put more mistakes around it until it goes away. So I'm gonna keep filling in this area and then we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. I've actually wrote about this leafy meander twice. It appeared in my very first book, Free Motion Quilting with Angela Walters, but I also included it in my newest book, Free Motion Meandering. I feel like it's such a great meander to learn how to work your way around an area, and it's not as intimidating as a swirl or a more complex looking design. All right, let's see how it turned out. And there we have the beautiful leafy meander. Remember, the key is to keeping the spacing consistent, and if you make any mistakes, just keep echoing around them till they go away.
Now that you've learned that leafy shape and how to maneuver around an area, let's talk about how you can easily add interest to your quilts with this design. If I want those leaves to follow a certain direction, especially over a whole quilt, I would use my water-soluble pen to mark that out. The line doesn't have to be perfect, it's just gonna give me a guideline or an idea of where I want those leaves to fall. Basically, instead of going in all different directions, I'm gonna quilt those leaves so that they weave around a particular area. It'll really help draw your eye to an area of the quilt or just keep the quilting nice and interesting. What can I say? I'm easily amused. Now, let's pretend, hypothetically, that you really love the person you're quilting this for or you really wanna draw attention to an area, what you can do is actually quilt that first leaf bigger, then with that little defined space that you made, you can put another design inside. And what this is gonna really do is add a lot more quilting and that density is really gonna kind of make it pop. And I definitely wanna be sure that I'm echoing, 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 because that's gonna help separate it from the filler and make sure that it's noticeable. Now, I know there's some of you out there that are like, uh-uh, oh heck no. That's all right, you don't have to do this. There's some of you that are like, yeah, I wanna try that. Make sure that you love the person that you're quilting this for because adding that little detail to the leaves is gonna take a little bit longer. I mean, it's gonna look amazing and it's definitely worth the work, but make sure they're quilt worthy before you use it on their quilts. And when I'm echoing, I'm not worried that the spacing between the lines is perfect. I would much rather have a smooth line than perfect spacing. So don't worry about the spacing as much as keeping that line smooth. I love when you take two designs and combine them together. It just gives you more versatility to the quilting designs that you learn. Plus, it makes it more fun. If I'm getting bored of one design, it kind of fits my personality to switch back and forth between the two. So what I'm gonna do is echo back around my whole design so that you can see kind of what we've got going on here. There we have the design kind of following that general area. Now, once I have the main element, I can decide what I'm gonna put around it. I think what I'm gonna do this time though is quilt littler leaves, which isn't quite as drastic as a smaller meander, but it's a little bit more of a filler than doing same size. So it's gonna be kind of a good in-between. Well, I'm gonna fill in one side, work my way around, and then fill in the other. So let's see how that turns out. It's hard to get an idea of the texture though with this line in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray that off so we can see what it looks like. And there we have it. The smaller leaves next to it really makes that kind of center pop off, but not too much. And of course, adding a little filler in there was just a fun way to go about it. Once you get comfortable quilting the leafy meander, you'll be surprised at how many different ways you can use it on the quilt. As an all over design, I love to put it in between blocks like I did on this particular quilt. That churn dash block is so bright and beautiful. I knew I wanted something pointy to kind of go in the background. Being able to change direction quickly really helped me fill in the spaces between the block. Quilting the leaves with a filler inside of it will really add a wow factor to the backgrounds of your quilts. Now, of course, this is something I'm gonna do in areas that you can actually see it, but here we have the leafy meander in that shiny gold thread really kind of working its way around this quilt. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can combine it with swirls to make a really interesting motif. It really is amazing what you can do with one simple shape. Well, it's your turn now. Go ahead and try quilting that leafy meander, either the basic all over or the one with a little bit more customization to it. Either way, it's gonna look great on your quilts. As you're working through the design, please leave comments. Let me know if you have any questions. I try to get on there and answer them as often as I can. I want you to love this design as much as I do. So let me know if I can help you out in any way. I also want you to subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be releasing little tip videos that are specific to this design as well as others, and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. Well, I'll see you next week with our next free motion challenge quilting design.